There's nothing that Matt Stone and Trey Parker love doing more than courting controversy, and some of their jokes end up offending powerful people. These are the 18 South Park episodes that have been banned in some shape or form over the years, along with one that wasn't, but probably should be. It took a while for South Park to fully find its rhythm, but the season 3 opener, Rainforest, Schmame Forest, proved that the third time was definitely the charm for the series. This anti-environmentalist episode was inspired by Parker's real-life experience in Costa Rica. On a recommendation from Flea of the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Trey and his girlfriend at the time booked a trip to the rainforest. Probably a bad move, considering Parker's hatred of snakes. In the South Park audio commentary, Parker described the country as, quote, hot and dirty and smelly expressing frustration with Flea for recommending the trip. I hate the rainforest! You go right ahead and plow down this whole f***ing thing! That's swell! Once he came back stateside, he penned a less-than-flattering episode about the country that finds the South Park kids on a school trip to San Jose. Seeing as the country is depicted as an impoverished nation overrun by insects, snakes, and revolutionaries, it's little wonder that it didn't go over well in Costa Rica, with the country's tourism minister Carlos Benavides denouncing it in 2007. In 2011, MTV Latin America decided to stop airing the original episode, eventually releasing a censored version dubbed by Studio Center in 2012. The finale episode of the three-part Meteor Shower trilogy, Jubilee is one of Trey and Matt's favorite in the series. It was also the final of three episodes the creators still had to make after putting together the full-length film, South Park, Bigger, Longer, Uncut, and they had more than a touch of vacationitis during its production. Feeling pretty great about their work on the movie, they decided to make the episode as bonkers as possible and just get it over with. The episode revolves around Kyle and Kenny's camping trip with the Jew Scouts on the night of a big meteor shower. Between Kenny's crash course in Judaism and the Tron-inspired vision of a macaroni-pictured crazed Moses, the episode spends plenty of time goofing around with Jewish traditions. Likely owing to concerns about how it would be received, the episode, which first aired in 1999, was not originally dubbed in Hungarian. It was finally released in Hungary on Cool TV in 2005 and became available for sale in that country around the same time. In Hungarian, the episode title translates to Addicts of Religion. In 2001, illusionist David Blaine was at peak popularity, and that made him a prime target for South Park parody. Super Best Friend stepped up to the challenge by imagining a world where Blaine heads up a Scientology-inspired cult called Blaintology, using the art of illusion to lure in acolytes through his magic camp. Impressed by Blaine's magic, Kyle, Stan, Kenny, Cartman, and Butters sign up, only to find themselves shaved bald and trapped in a suicide cult. Hey, not Kyle. I'm Butters. I thought you were Kyle. No, I'm Stan. You're Stan? Where's Kenny? Who are you? I'm Kyle. <laughs> Guess who I am, you guys. With everyone else completely brainwashed, it's up to Stan to save the day with the help of Jesus and his super best friends. A Justice League-style team that consists of Jesus, Krishna, Buddha, Muhammad, Lao Tzu, Moses, Joseph Smith, and the Aquaman-inspired Seaman. The episode is brimming with potentially offensive content, but it was the episode's depiction of the Prophet Muhammad that would get it banned years after first airing amid a rise in threats from extremist Muslims. After one such extremist executed Dutch filmmaker, Theon van Gogh in 2004, networks were far less inclined to risk airing images of Muhammad. South Park Studios removed the episode from its available content, and it's one of only a few episodes that can't be found on streaming video. Not even the South Park movie was safe from the banhammer. South Park, bigger, longer, and uncut, takes Stan, Kyle, Cartman, and Kenny to the big screen, where an R-rated Terrence and Philip movie results in war kicking off between the United States and Canada. Meanwhile, Paramore's Saddam Hussein and Satan hatch a plot for global domination. Bigger, longer, and uncut heavily explores the topic of censorship, something that was on Trey and Matt's mind, considering that their series had already been the target of ban attempts several times in its first two seasons. Seasons. This time it was the depiction of Saddam that sparked anger from, well, Saddam. Unlike the show's other cartoonish figures, Hussein's character uses a photographic cutout of his real head, and he's characterized as a masochist in an abusive relationship with the devil himself. He even gets his own musical number. The real Hussein did not find the joke remotely funny, and the film was banned in Iraq upon its release. After Hussein's arrest, Stone said he had it on good authority that Marines had forced the dictator to watch the film on repeat before his execution. 
Just as the 90s Beanie Baby craze was fizzling out, the Pokemon explosion began taking over more kiosks and playgrounds across America. Many pearl-clutching parents looked on in helpless horror, as kids everywhere became obsessed with the Japanese pocket monsters. Naturally, it was only a matter of time before a reactionary wave of satanic panic rose up against supposedly evil creatures with names like Jigglypuff and Geodude. Groups like the Child Care Action Project railed against the franchise for its violence, magic, mind control, and female characters in crop tops. So, of course, the South Park kids had to get in on the fun in the 1999 episode, Jim Pokemon. In a clear parody of the adorable anime juggernaut, South Park Elementary is overtaken by a popular series filled with subliminal messaging. This doesn't make sense. Are those stupid things supposed to be animals or robots or what? I don't know, but I suddenly kind of want to own them all. The kids become compelled to buy Chim Pokemon products and attend Chim Pokemon Camp, but it's all secretly a super soldier brainwashing vehicle to train kids for a second attack on Pearl Harbor. Besides the obviously taboo kamikaze joke, the episode also seems to take aim at Emperor Hirohito Showa and relies on a running gag about comparing Japanese and Caucasian genitals. Unsurprisingly, someone felt the episode wouldn't go over well with Japanese audiences, and it was ultimately cut from Japan's Wow Wow network schedule and the Japanese DVD release. Easily one of the most shocking episodes from the show's early seasons, Cartman Joins Nambla is one of a handful of South Park episodes conveniently left off the lineup by Italian free-to-air station Italia One, during the show's original Italian syndication in 2003. Italian fans had to wait until 2006 before they got the chance to catch it. Although it's hard to pinpoint which offense tipped the scales against it, the episode is full of gasp-worthy gags centered around the North American Manboy Love Association. When Cartman said out on a quest to obtain more mature friends, he turns to the internet, where he immediately finds plenty of grown men eager to meet up with young boys. When his new friends keep getting arrested, Dr. Mephisto suggests he join Nambla, the North American Marlon Brando lookalikes. There's some confusion when his plans intersect with the more infamous group of the same acronym. And then there's the episode's B-plot, which revolves around Kenny's extensive efforts to stop his parents from having another child through repeated attempts to induce an abortion. Both stories storylines are a lot to stomach, and it's not hard to see why Italia 1 felt that audiences weren't quite ready for it. The two-part storyline covered in the episodes To the Handicapped Go to Hell and Probably was also controversial enough to get cut from Italia 1. The story serves as a follow-up to Bigger, Longer, and Uncut by revisiting Satan's relationship with Saddam Hussein. The trouble starts when Father Maxi frightens a bejesus out of South Park's Gentile population with a good old-fashioned hellfire and brimstone sermon. Scared straight, Cartman, Kenny, and Stan decide to get religious, but soon begin to ask some inconvenient questions. Specifically, they want to know whether or not their Jewish and disabled friends will go to hell for not confessing their sins. Things go completely off the rails when the children become disillusioned after uncovering Maxi's hypocrisy. Carmen starts a fundamentalist cult, and Satan's love triangle with Saddam and Chris turns homicidal. Amid all of the story's twists and turns, it's also revealed that, of all the world's religions, only Mormons get into the good place. While it's hard to say why Italia 1 left the two-parter off their playlist until 2006, the images of a priest having sex with a married woman and a deeply critical look at organized religion probably had something to do with it. A Ladder to Heaven revolves around Kyle, Cartman, and Stan's efforts to reach their late friend Kenny in heaven, along with the media frenzy that ensues when South Park's adults learn of their efforts. Unaware that the boys' act is not one of childhood innocence, but a misplaced attempt to get their hands on a winning all-you-can-grab candy prize ticket Kenny was hanging onto, the entire nation starts rooting for them, and country star Alan Jackson even writes an emotional song. As always happens in South Park, things escalate to the extreme. The whole thing turns into a space race with Japan. Cartman becomes possessed after accidentally consuming Kenny's ashes, and Saddam Hussein builds a WMD factory in heaven. Weapons of mass destruction? No! This is a chocolate chip factory. See? The 2002 episode takes aim at Alan Jackson's use of the 9-11 terrorist attacks to sell records, which Stone and Parker felt was an exploitative cash grab. Whether it was due to concerns over 9-11 sensitivity or the depiction of the Japanese government, the episode ended up being one of a handful of South Park episodes not to air during the show's first run in Japan. 
Although the depiction of Muhammad in Super Best Friends went largely unnoticed when it originally aired, most media outlets and production studios were doing everything they could to avoid offending an entire religion by 2006. As a network that typically didn't shy away from controversy, Comedy Central was still struggling to work out where South Park could draw a boundary with future depictions of the Prophet when Trey and Matt decided to take a crack at the discourse in the two-episode story arc Cartoon Wars. If you hate a TV show, all you have to do is get an episode pulled. Pretty soon the show is compromised and it goes off the air. Part analysis of the Muhammad controversy, part brutal savaging of Family Guy, Cartoon Wars begins with a typical South Parkian panic over the news that the Seth MacFarlane series intends to show a depiction of Muhammad in an upcoming episode. MacFarlane took it better than expected, calling the episode funny and accurate in a Rolling Stone interview. Although he probably wasn't talking about all the stuff with the manatees. Regardless, the episode's content left the network feeling squeamish, and the version that made it to air included a title card explaining the scene rather than actually displaying an image of Muhammad. When HBO took over Comedy Central's catalog, they decided to completely dodge the issue by leaving the two-parter off the streaming app entirely, along with three other controversial South Park episodes. For the 200th episode of South Park, Trey and Matt decided to pull out all the stops by bringing back every famous figure the show had ripped on over the years, and the Prophet Muhammad was teased to be one of them. United under Tom Cruise, the celebrities who have been victimized by South Park all arrive in town to file a class action lawsuit against its residents. But there's a catch. Believing Muhammad to be immune from mockery and ridicule, Tom Cruise and company concoct a deal. If the good people of South Park will hand the Prophet over so they can take his powers, they will agree to drop the lawsuit. As with Cartoon Wars, the two-part storyline spent the first episode teasing Muhammad's appearance, leaving fans to wonder if they would follow through in 201. And just like Cartoon Wars, the episode that aired was a censored version of what Trey and Matt had intended. When a foiled car bomb attempt was uncovered in Times Square soon after the episode's original airing, some speculated a link to South Park. Although one was never found, 200 and 201 would end up completely banned across most digital streaming sites, including Hulu, Netflix, and Max. Hurricane Katrina would mark one of the most devastating storms to hit the United States. By the time it was over, the Category 5 hurricane had taken 1,400 lives and flooded 80% of New Orleans, laying waste to the city's infrastructure and leaving hundreds of thousands of people displaced and unsheltered. Airing less than two months after these tragic events, a South Park episode two days before the day after tomorrow parodies the poor government, cultural, and media responses that arose in Katrina's wake. The drama begins when Carmen and Stan crash a boat into the world's largest beaver dam, causing the town of Beaverton to flood. Rather than focus on helping its residents, the world obsesses over where to lay blame. And when scientists land on global warming, mass hysteria ensues. The episode originally aired on Japanese television, but was later left out of Japan's Fox Network's syndication schedule. There doesn't seem to be a consensus on why the episode was left out, but some have speculated it had to do with concerns over sensitivity to those victimized by Katrina and similar disasters. Hello? Anybody? We'd like to be rescued, please! No matter what the circumstances surrounding them are, spinal cord injuries are always tragic. However, the fact that Christopher Reeve rose to fame portraying Superman made the 1995 horse riding accident that left him paralyzed from the neck down that much more shocking. Shocking enough that even Trey and Matt felt he was off limits as fodder for South Park humor. But all that changed after they watched a 2003 Larry King interview with Reeve, which they saw as a sign that Reeve was losing it a little. The pair turned this observation into an episode that sees the actor traveling to South Park to deliver a speech in support of stem cells as medicine. Jimmy becomes so jealous that he and Timmy start a club specifically for people disabled from birth called the Crips, unaware that there's another group with the same name. While the South Park kids spiral into a gang war, Reeve goes around sucking the stem cells out of fetuses. Despite this disturbing content, the episode was originally slated to air in Japan, along with the rest of the season 7 run. However, Reeve died shortly before it was broadcast, so the Japanese network decided not to to wear it out of respect. Since no religion is off-limits for South Park, it was only a matter of time before the show's creators put Catholicism in their crosshairs. That's exactly what happened in the Season 9 episode, Bloody Mary, which finds Randy Marsh transformed into a full-fledged hypochondriac after a stint in a 12-step program convinces him that he's afflicted by the disease of alcoholism. I have to admit that I'm powerless to this terrible disease. <coughs> 
When rumors of a miraculous bleeding Virgin Mary statue begin to circulate, Randy becomes convinced she holds the key to his cure. Unfortunately, the episode's release coincided with the Catholic Holy Day, the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. With its papal parody and statue of the Virgin Mary on her period, the episode sufficiently got quite a few high-ranking Catholics in a tizzy. President of the U.S. Bishops William Skielstad felt compelled to pen an irate letter to Viacom, and after the Catholic League for Religious and Civil Rights got involved, the episode was left out of the end-of-season reruns in the US. In Australia, Melbourne Archbishop Dennis Hart's demand for the episode's censorship was initially met with dismissal, but its release was ultimately postponed until August 2006. The season 13 South Park episode Pinewood Derby finds Randy Marsh stealing a superconductor magnet from the Large Hadron Collider to give his son a winning edge in the statewide Pinewood Derby. When it hits warp speed, they get caught up in the aftermath of an intergalactic bank heist that ends with Randy bribing leaders around the world using a bunch of stolen space cash. The many world leaders impersonated in the episode include German Chancellor Angela Merkel, Italian PM Silvio Berlusconi, and French President Nicolas Sarkozy, among others. A minor controversy arose surrounding the portrayal of John Howard as Australia's Prime Minister, given that Kevin Rudd had been in office for well over a year at that point. There was also the fact that Vladimir Putin was misidentified as Russia's president rather than its Prime Minister. However, it was the episode's portrayal of Mexican President Felipe Calderon that got the episode cut south of the border. The episode depicts Calderon as leading from a rather dumpy, non-presidential looking office and wisely spending the nation's money on water parks. The network airing South Park at the time was MTV, who originally listed the episode in their television lineup. In light of Calderon's portrayal, the network's execs felt it was a good idea to ask permission before airing, causing them to switch it out for a replay of the episode The Ring unannounced and leaving many Mexican South Park fans disappointed. Inspired by the impact of Chinese censorship on American businesses, South Park took the subject on in the season 23 episode, Banned in China. True to its name, it generated so much ire from the People's Republic of China that the show was banned from the country and completely scrubbed from the Chinese internet. The drama unfolds when Randy Marsh travels to China in search of investors for Tegrity Farms and ends up in prison for cannabis possession. During his time there, he runs into a host of Disney characters who have been censored by the Chinese Communist Party, including including Winnie the Pooh. He was banned because of the many memes comparing him to Xi Jinping. The episode is fairly scathing in its attacks on both the Chinese government and American businesses willing to sell out for a Chinese paycheck. All right, well, you know what they say. You gotta lower your ideals of freedom if you wanna suck on the warm teat of China. Given China's long list of banned content, which includes TV shows as seemingly innocuous as The Big Bang Theory and The Good Wife, it should come as no surprise that Banned in China was enough to get South Park kicked out of the country for good. Trey and Matt issued a mock apology via Comedy Central's X, formerly Twitter, profile, declaring, We too love money more than freedom and democracy. What's so offensive about English literature? A lot, apparently. Even though South Park consistently crosses lines and offends all sorts of groups, the show's least popular episode might just be the one that adapts a famous Charles Dickens novel, Pip, the season 4 episode that switches out the usual South Park kids for their 19th century British counterparts, is a riff on the classic story Great Expectations, and nobody's turning on Comedy Central to watch Great Expectations. It seems that fans were more offended by the bait and switch than they were about any political or cultural controversy. In their mini-commentary for the episode, Matt and Trey called it one of the show's least popular episodes, something they can't quite explain. Ow! I hate you! You're an oozing painful hemorrhoid that belt just pass! Oh dear! According to the creators, Pip had been a character from the beginning of the series, and they had always talked about putting him in their version of Great Expectations. Still arguably more faithful than many adaptations, the Malcolm McDowell narrated episode gives the story of a happier ending than the Dickens tale, one filled with robot monkeys. Pip may be a truly hated episode, but does it really deserve to be banned? Some fans seem to think so, and the ones that don't probably wouldn't be upset to see it go. Even Terence and Philip in Not Without My Anus, which interrupted a massive cliffhanger to play a full episode of a fake Canadian fart show, seems to have fewer diehard haters than poor Pip. And they all lived happily ever after, except for Pocket, who died of hepatitis B.